In this video, we are going to talk about a small child who has been brought to the hospital by the parents and in the examination or during the investigations, we have found that she has pleural fluid. So this will be shown in the investigation results later. In this time, they'll just ask you to take a focused history first. They will tell you that they are going to show you the x-ray later on. And based on that, you'll have to make your diagnosis. So looking at the steam, this is what the steam is telling us. A three years old baby girl has been brought in by mother to the ED with the complaints of high fever, cough and rapid breathing. The most important part of this question is if you look at the question here, what you can see is we already know that this child has pneumonia and she's already in the treatment. So that is a clue about what we need to focus on in cases like this. It's important that we stay focused on the given diagnosis and also explore the possibilities of other coexisting conditions. Here, if we try to go too broad, we'll not have time or we'll run out of time. If you try to go too narrow, only focusing on the community acquired pneumonia, you might get tricked as well. So you have to have a balance here. So the focus should be on the community acquired pneumonia and its complications. You should also do the opportunistic screening for the other possible conditions. They will tell you in this time that an x-ray has been done and you will be shown the x-ray and findings of the physical examination at four minutes. That means most of the information will be given to you to make the diagnosis. You have to be focused while explaining the x-ray and you also need to check for key information in the examination. Now moving on to the next part, regarding the task they are saying that we'll have to take history for four minutes this is the first one then after that explain the x-ray to the mother discuss briefly the probable diagnosis and management to the mother now at this instant in questions like this what i would like to suggest you to do is when they tell you that they are going to show you x-ray in four minutes try to think what could be the possible diagnosis here and what would be the extra findings in those possible diagnosis in your two minutes thinking time that will help you to focus on the correct information to identify from the x-ray so that it becomes easier for you to explain them to the mother or indirectly to the examiner. Now in this case as well, because we know that the child has pneumonia, x-ray has been done, most likely there will be some complications of x-ray. And if we think about the cases we have been getting in the past, it may involve talking about some opacity in the x-ray that we need to explain to the mother or maybe talk about the pleural effusion because that has been another case. So this is how you can utilize the information from the recalls. Like what cases have been asked in, in situation like this so that you can think what are the information that I need to explain this to the mother. Moving forward with the case itself here, pneumonic effusion, that's what we are dealing with here, is a condition which refers to the accumulation of fluid in the pleural space and it happens usually due to pneumonia or other kind of lung infections. So it's more like a reactive accumulation of fluid in the pleural space. Generally, it is associated with the bacterial pneumonia. And we have been told in this case as well that the lady, the, the, the girl was being treated for bacterial pneumonia. So potential complications of paranemonic effusion is the infection of the pleural space or infection of the fluid in the pleural space or infection of the pleural effusion. And that means it will require the treatment of the infections and in some cases it may require the drainage as well. And we need to be able to identify the situations when the drainage is required. Usually if it's a complicated effusion then in that case drainage will be required in non-complicated effusion then you may just need to put the child in antibiotics and you don't require the drainage as such. And that's what the focus of this question is. In the exam they might change the presentation slightly to tell you that this is a complicated effusion so you should be able to identify the complicated effusion or they might simply give you a simple case where you will simply present the possibility that drainage may be required. Let's get into the case itself. How do we ask the question here? How do we do the focus history taking here? We can ask by for we can start by first asking about if the child has any pain or if the child has shared any complaint of pain with the mother or the parents. So if that is the case, we can start from there and we can elaborate that point further. So you can ask the mother about the presenting complaint first. As we know, in this case, the presenting complaint has been the complaint of high fever and then we have cough and then we have rapid breathing. So we'll have to focus in these things. So once we know what the chief complaint is or where we need to focus on, we can go forward and we can ask more questions about fever and cough, when they started, when whether they started at the same time or not. And then we can ask about their progression. 
if they are getting better or worse. We can elaborate fever a little more. We can ask if the fever is there all the time or it is intermittent fever, if there are any chills and rigor or not, if there is any sweating or not. And if the mother has given any analgesics or antipyretics to the baby and if that has controlled the fever or not. And then we can ask about the cough as well. So cough, we can again ask nature of the cough, whether it is dry cough or wet cough and so on. So basically in these cases where there are multiple symptoms, first you have to identify which is the primary symptoms and then after elaborating that you can go on to elaborate the other symptoms. So you're finished asking questions about all the symptoms given in the question before you start asking other questions. So in this case, the next thing for us to ask would be because we already know that the child has, our child was diagnosed with pneumonia. So we can ask a few symptoms of pneumonia as well as few symptoms associated with the complications of pneumonia. So we can ask about rapid breathing, shortness of breath, chest tightness, which are the things that we see in the presentation of pneumonia or in the complications. Then we can ask a few other symptoms as well, gastrointestinal symptoms like tummy pain, vomiting, changes in bowel motion. These can give us an idea about the complications as well as the possibility of having any anaphylactic reactions. Now we know that the child was on treatment with the antibiotics and this could be an added anaphylactic reaction as well. So one practical thing here that we all know is anaphylaxis is less likely. Why? Because usually it has a more acute presentation and there in the history they have not told us anything about that. But we are simply exploring the possibilities of any red flag symptoms that we should not miss. Anyone who has, you know, breathing difficulties, especially children with breathing difficulties, and if there is any acute exacerbation of the problem, we have to consider the possibility of the new infections, superadded infections, or even anaphylactic reactions to the treatment they are receiving or they have recently started. That is the reason you need to take care of that as well. Time course, duration of the fever and progression of respiratory symptoms, like how it has been going on, and exacerbating and relieving factors where you can ask about the medicines they are taking, if the medicines are helping them or not, and so on. Severity, especially in case of fever and cough. In case of fever, you can ask if they have major if the fever, the temperature of the child, and how much was it, or what was the highest temperature recorded. In case of cough, one important thing we need to remember in cough question is like if the child keeps coughing persistently and then turns pale or vomits because that gives us an idea about the pertussis. And again, there is a, we are asking these questions in the background of someone who was diagnosed with pneumonia. That can be a trap as well. That's why we are exploring the symptoms related to pneumonia, but we, but we are also asking questions to find out if this could be some other causes that it ha started happening at the same time. So respiratory distress signs in children, it's very important for us to identify them. In these cases, more important for us in the emergency situation is to find out if there is any immediate threat to the child as compared to making a correct diagnosis. Your diagnosis at this stage can be pending, but you have to be able to find out if there are any pending emergencies. So you need to check if the child has any nasal flaring, use of accessory muscles or intercostal or subcostal recessions. These are the things we need to know. But while asking the question to the mother, you need to ask about these things as well and how do you do that you have to ask the mother questions like if she has persistent high fever and you need to ask the questions related to severe respiratory distress you can ask about waterworks eating and drinking as we do in all the cases then moving forward to the next part we may need to ask a few questions related to past medical history in this case there is one background condition that the child has that is pneumonia and we also need to explore if the child has any other comorbidities which increases their susceptibility to respiratory infection so we can ask like if the child has any chronic illnesses previous episodes of respiratory infections if yes how many times in a year or how many times in the last six months any hospitalizations in the in the last year this gives us an idea about the possibility of asthma or any acute respiratory symptoms current and past medications including any known drug allergies drug allergies are important for us because you know that we are considering the possibility of anaphylaxis as well at the same time if it's a non severe allergic reaction then also the, the patient may present with these symptoms any past surgical procedures especially related to the respiratory symptoms may not be that much relevant but just can be a routine question to ask 
and previous hospital admissions and their reasons which we have already asked the Bainsma questions you don't need to go into the details of Bainsma questions you may not have any time to do that but you can just ask one screening question for each topic such as any complications during birth and neonatal period immunization is important in any case where the child is presenting with the symptoms consistent with an infection you have to ask if the immunization is up to date or not and this applies to all the cases not just this one nutrition and development often are asked as routine screening questions and here it is more important to know about the development because any child with recurrent infections can have failure to thrive as well so there can be you know stunting there can be a failure to gain weight and so you have to ask those questions so nutrition development question but i would pay more attention to the development question especially to establish the chronicity of the condition social factors especially in the social factors exposure to the allergens or exposure to the things that can make the condition worse or can expose the child to recurrent infections that we need to consider and we have discussed several times that smoking pet exposure carpet at home and daycare starting school recently these are some of the factors that increase the vulnerability to new infections or recurrent infections so you need to include this in your history you need to ask about that more generally is not that important unless you are suspecting child abuse so in this case again if this is optional so it's up to you to decide i would perhaps just skip this question activity level changes in the activity you have already asked this question in the red flags you could have asked this question if you had not asked it earlier contact history in infection and travel history in infection as usual is always important so you can ask about recent travel or contact with sick individuals so home environment we have asked the most important question of the home environment already but if not you can ask that here and then after that if there is anything left if anything that you want to add you can do that family history we are especially interested in finding out their vulnerability to different respiratory infections so we want to know if anyone in the family has had recurrent respiratory infections has any history of allergies or any history of deficient immune conditions so that we can find out about this immunodeficiency syndromes which predisposes the children to recurrent infections so questions we can ask are like anyone anyone in the family diagnosed with any kind of medical illnesses any illnesses running in the family or does anyone in the family tends to get sick quite often these kind of questions can will give us idea about this so physical examination findings there will be a lot of things there but you have to focus on the positive ones the ones that you can expect in this case so some of the positive findings are increased respiratory rate as expected temperature is increased oxygen saturation is normal means the child is still stable percussion dullness on the left side indicates that there is either fluid or there is a solid mass and decreased air entry in the left side with the bronchial breathing is giving us an idea about it could be some kind of consolidation there because of the pneumonia now if we move on they will show us the x-ray so how do we start the explanation of the x-ray first is we need to tell the parents that this is the x-ray of the chest showing the lungs and the heart now these white structures are bones this black structure indicates the air inside the lungs and the gray structures are tissue and muscles now if you compare the two sides of the lungs you may note that on the left side the corner does not look as sharp as the right side similarly on the left side we can see a big whitish structure that we do not see in the right side this indicates that the child has pneumonia and there is some kind of fluid collecting in the space around the lungs and this is consistent with the presentation of paraneumonic effusion so basically you need to remember what you may expect to see in a case of paraneumonic effusion you may see a mass or a consolidation you may see the blunting of the costophrenic angle and you may also see the trachea being pushed to the other side if you look at the carina you can see that the carina is not in the center which means it's being pushed to the other side then after that the next step for you would be how it is treated now regarding the treatment this is the protocol of the royal children hospital you can see that the first thing is you do the chest x-ray you identify that there is paraneumonic effusion and then after that you start the antibiotics and you do the chest ultrasound the reason you do the chest ultrasound is you have to find out if it is a complicated effusion or uncomplicated effusion or simple effusion because in case of simple effusion you can simply proceed with the antibiotics however if it's a complicated effusion then you'll have to refer or you'll have to do a consultation with the respiratory physician or the surgical team because we need to now consider the possibility of the drainage and that decision will be made by those procedures will be done by that team so we need to remember this we have to counsel this to the parents how we are going to do that 
we have to tell the parents that because there has been a complication of pneumonia we'll have to admit the child please don't worry this condition is quite manageable and we have a specialist here who will take care of your child or whatever is the name it's always better to mention the name now the first thing we are going to do is we'll establish IV line that means we'll put some needles into her veins to directly access the blood and this is a quicker and more effective method of giving the food nutrition fluid as well as the medicine we'll have to do some blood test for that we'll take some blood samples and we'll try to check if there are any kind of infections in blood or we'll also take the urine sample to check if there is any infection of the urine as well we may decide to do some specific tests to find out about the other infections such as covid and influenza as well as the PCR test for pneumococcal. These days PCR has become a very common term so you may not need to explain this to the parents. They understand what PCR is. Then the most important part here is after this we'll also do an ultrasound of the chest to find out if there is any complications with this fluid accumulation because our treatment plan will depend on that. If it is a complicated effusion in that case we'll have to consult with the senior specialist team who will decide whether or not we need to drain that fluid out and do some investigations in case it's a simple effusion we'll proceed with the antibiotics monitoring and it may take a few days for whatever is the name of the child to get better so this will be our plan management plan and they had only asked us to do a brief management that's why we'll only mention that so this part specialist intervention we have already mentioned and this is the case of paranemonic effusion to summarize what we are going to do we'll ask a few questions related to pneumonia and its complications we'll also ask a few questions to explore the possibilities of other infections as well as any allergic and anaphylactic reactions and in the past medical history and Bynesman family history we are focusing more on finding the risk factors which may predispose the child to recurrent infections Physical examination findings will be typical of pneumonia and then in the x-ray we have to remember the findings of paranemonic effusion which is consolidation, blunting of the costophrenic angle and deviation of the trachea. Then after that in the management part, the management is the routine management for uncomplicated or simple effusions which includes antibiotics. We'll do some routine investigations as well but if it is complicated which we'll find out by doing the ultrasound of the chest. Then in that case we'll do we'll have to do a specialist consultation who may decide to do the drainage and may send the fluid for analysis to find out if it is a complicated diffusion or not because one last thing is complicated diffusion we can check them with the ultrasound and also by doing the, the lab test on the fluid the, the aspirate that we get from there from there also we can make the decision we can make the diagnosis however we don't need to remember or memorize the parameters which can help us to decide whether it is complicated or simple effusion so that's all about paranemonic effusion if you have any questions or feedback please let me know in the comments thank you